come before you with the God's word. And I hope and pray this day that we're gonna this evening that we're gonna spend together another 45 to 50 minutes would be a great blessing to all of us. Hoping that we do remember yesterday what we are trying to discuss about at many a time that uh, the, the changes that we are trying to create by ourselves outwardly that will not remain to be a, a, a permanent change, but many a times it's a temporary one. It, uh, it, it, it doesn't have a long lasting effect over our life because it's not from deep from our heart, but it was from an outward uh, change. So we also saw how Jesus was, uh, Jesus just really loved to deal with the most innermost man, that is the inner being, that is our heart itself. So he is, he is uh, interested in the real attitude or attitude of our heart, real intentions of our heart, real desires of our heart. That's where Jesus wanted to make change. More than a behavioral changes, Jesus loved to look into a little more deeper, I would say really deeper, where the behavioral change would happen when the, the, the heart is completely transformed. And God is doing the same thing in our lives too. What is one of the dangerous, that uh, we have seen one of the dangerous thing of just having an, uh, 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 a look of a, or an outward expression, outward uh, thing of a believer, not an inward, the Bible itself, uh, used for, through Paul, Bible very clearly says that many people have this outward uh, appearance of a believer, but the real power, the real Christianity, the real, real Christ follower is absolutely missing in that person. And we have seen how, how, how that uh, can come out. That can come out when we really face crisis in our lives at the same time when we have everything in our life. Both the areas, it's a quite dangerous uh, place to be in. We have seen how Israelites have, uh, you know, uh, responded to difficult situations when they were in the desert. By the way, the same Israel, Israelites who have reached the Canaan and have got into the promised land where God has promised them did not change much. Much we when we read the first king, second king, and you know Samuel and other prophetical words, you will clearly see there was still problem was in the life of Israel. They still uh, lead a wayward life, completely forgetting the greatest gifts that God has given in their life. What was the reason is they were not ready to go through the process where God was asking them to go through. Yesterday we spoke about, as Enoch was rightly mentioned, about God being a good doctor, a doctor who would like to di diagnose our heart, get things a little more deeper. Why is it? It is because God is looking for a permanent change. And that is what God is looking for in our lives. But Israel, it's completely failed in it. It's, it's because they were not per permanently transformed. They were temporarily, uh, you know, they were getting what they want to. Because, by the way, they left their Egypt, can, Egypt you know, uh, not with a desire of knowing God, but their entire desire was to just get those promises which has promised. Those things are important, but those things are not that important as the transformation of your heart. When we study the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, why God very clearly says why God allowed this Israelis to go through the process where God says this, that I wanted to test you. I wanted to test your heart, your attitude, to, attitudes of your heart. I wanted to make you humble. I wanted to make you a, a community, a worship community. Remember, when Moses went to Pharaoh and Moses said this, please leave our people, you know, give us freedom so that we could go to the uh, wilderness and we could worship the Lord. That was the reason, the clear reason. It was not about Canaan. It was not about the promised land. No, he said, so the reason of we, wanted to, we wanted to go out so that we could worship our God. Let me tell you, that was the prime reason of bringing these people out of the Egypt, not just to give them a land, more than that, you know, giving them a true uh, transformation, you know, creating a group of, group of people, uh, uh, creating a worship community that would worship the Lord with all their heart, with all their mind, and with all their strength, right? For that, the heart transformation is very important. Also, when we face uh, difficult situations in our life, I would say that, heat of our life that's when the real attitude and real character comes in i wanted to see i wanted to just you know bring your attention also to a few of the ways that we try to escape when god allows us to to go through certain situations i would like to share that with you today and uh, we'll at the end we will see what actually we need to be 
we need to be uh, doing in our life to see a permanent transformation. So transformation that lasts victorious life in Christ always. Now, what are the diff different situations that we face in our lives every day, almost every day? Difficulties at work or business, I mean, disappointments that we face, the different heat that we face in our life. Sometimes the stresses of being, if you're a parent, you know, the stresses of being a parent. Uh, if you are a young guy, many a times we face this uh, pressure from our culture, our financial stresses, most of any right now in the COVID-19 season, I know this is something that everyone, it doesn't matter who you are, around the globe, everyone going through this pressure, the pressure of financial stresses. We do not know what is going to happen, how things are going to be already picked or started. The people have been uh, sent out of the work and there are a lot of, lot of, few of the people in our church are in, in, into completely business. Their complete business has been shut down. They are trying to find out some other route where actually they could navigate uh, because they are not sure how the, how, uh, the world after COVID-19 going to look like. Everybody stunned and looking at the, uh, uh, at, at our uh, financial situation, how it's going to be, our economy, how it's going to be, we do not know. So it might be financial stresses that we might face in our life. Problems in our relationships. It might be between husband and wife, brothers and sisters, and other relationships uh, in your office, with, between your colleague, your managers, with your boss, with everyone. And expectation from others. And health challenges and difficulties of ministry. Pastors like us, we also face different, different difficulties in our ministries. So there are a lot of heat that we actually go through in our life every day. By the way, how do we handle a day? Think about a day that you went to office and you were submitted to your project, but your boss is not happy. But you know, you had been working hard for last six months on that project or three months on that project, but he wasn't that happy about uh, how, how good you have performed, that he wasn't happy about the outcome or output that you have given to him. Think about that day when you coming back home with a, with a heavy heart, with a disappointment that my boss, my team is not ha ha that happy with my performance. Though you worked hard for it, you were worked day and night to make these things happen, but they were not happy. Or they, they found a lot of bugs in a, in a, you know, in a, in a computer table. We got a lot of bugs there. there. Uh, things was not happening. The expectations of the customer was not met. How do you take that stress on that day? Right. Think about a day that you worked hard. Your colleague took the credit of everything that you worked. Think about you problem. You sorted out the issue, but at last we, you, you came to know the credit went to somebody else. The time of appraisal came where you, your, your profile was not uh, considered. How do you, how do we really face those kind of situations? For me being ministry, one day I, I, I preached a sermon. People were gloomy looking as if they, not, they don't understand. How do I take that on that day? Right after Sunday, my message uh, doesn't look like people were really happy with the message or people did not take that message into their heart. I felt like it was like bouncing back. How I'm going to go back home and be at peace. Right? Think about a problem in relationships. Husband and wife. Some argument broke out. And things, something that you said, by the way, you said, husband said, which wife didn't like it or something a wife said, husband didn't like it. And that actually went into an argument after argument. Um, you, know, you know, things beyond, went beyond control. What do you do? How do we face that situation? Think about being a parent. And I'm, now I'm a, I'm a dad of two kids. Uh, and now I really understand how it's struggling. It's sometimes it can be. It, it can be really, really tough sometimes. How do I take that? Right? All these things comes in our life. This is a real heat we do face in our life. By the way, we all face, whether you are a Christian or a Hindu or a Muslim, doesn't matter which religion, which background you're coming from, these things to follow, you know, these are there. But how do we face? Now, there are areas. Last time we have last yesterday we seen how we as a believer, how did we try to uh, you know uh, bring about some of the changes in our lives by ourselves? Let me tell you some of the way that we escape this heat. I'm going to give some of the ways that we normally, uh, generally, uh, generally human beings tend to escape from this heat like this. They would deny, avoid, and escape from it. How do they deny and avoid and escape? Uh, think about a day, as I said before, one day went to office, things are not happening right, you came back home, and you wanted to de-stress, you want to take away the stress, what you do, you just turn on your TV. And you are a sports loving person. Cricket was going on, not some other old cricket. You watch for cricket because now uh, you're just kind of refreshing your, yourself. Or you just went out for a walk. 
you want this peace by yourself you just had a tea and you just went out you sat for some time or or you saw some series whatever that you love you just spent some time with media uh, you know you know expecting that the stress from the office will be completely reduced okay that actually what you're, you are what you're trying to do is you are you're avoiding it you're escaping from the real problem let me tell you you're escaping from the real problem without even finding the solution for the stress now you're really stressed it might be workplace but your heart is heavy now now you're not dealing with it but you're escaping next second option is being a hypersensitive person right you get angry for everything or you had a bad day you come back home and whatever you find you're getting angry being a father i understand what it means right sometimes you get angry for this and that and this and that because you had a bad day somebody said something your friend took your credit or your boss was not happy with your work uh, the, the company is not considerate some something went bad and you being hypersensitive for everything now another is return evil for evil oh harboring the grudge within your heart not saying any, anybody not telling anything telling that okay i will show i will surely give this back now there is a you know, that employee that my colleague had done this to me i know how to repay i know there is a day that i can repay but tomorrow he got to come back come back to me again for some solutions that time i will not help him okay one way of doing it you know returning evil for evil next is bogged down paralyzed and captured this is actually happens when you have too much of stresses and when you don't deal with the stresses it can be kind of a final product okay you you uh, you withhold you know you withhold yourself from uh, from many ministry uh, responsibilities okay i've seen being a pastor i've seen many young people and an old uh, slowly uh, you know uh, relieving themselves from some of the responsibility that were given in the church uh, um, now i know why many of them do in the in the early days i thought it was it was natural they wanted to they're so humble that they actually trying to but i later i found it's not that they are bogged down and you know they paralyzed with many of the situation happening in their around so they are kind of relieving from all the responsibility they just want peace peace they are really escaping then next is self righteousness not is self righteousness self right is not my problem i got angry it was not my problem it was my situation you know uh, it was my wife who got angry at me you know my wife would have not told me that i would have not got angry if my child would have not behaved like would have not done if my boss would have not said that i would have not you know had uh, you know had my uh, my colleague do something this this way i would have not acted in that way right we kind of become self righteous where you are not the problem the problem is somebody else these are the thorny responses that means this is our true response these are sinful responses that would come out of his life what is the problem with all these responses i'm not saying that when you come back from office you don't need some stress free time private time i'm not saying you shouldn't be jogging and you should not go just go out and relax i'm not saying no i'm saying okay that's that that things are sometimes important sometimes you're you're taking up too much responsibility in the church you need some relaxing you know some uh, some time to be be alone at your time that's all important by the way what i'm trying to say is that you are not dealing with the issue there at all what you have done is we have found different route to really escape from the real issue these all things denying avoiding and escaping be hypersensitive return evil to evil uh, evil for evil you know being bogged down and paralyzed and captured and self righteous all can be done and this is a very dangerous way of doing uh, responding to the situations why because you and we have just done something very uh, uh, you know how do we say very common that everybody else in this world does we here we have been acted like a christian what we have done we just do everybody else everybody else does the same thing they all just do the same thing then what's the difference between all of us all christians a follower of jesus and other people these are the thorny responses to the many of the problems that happens in our lives but these are not the right way of dealing with the real issue as i said when god allowed the israelites to go through some of the difficult situations in some of the stresses some of the pressure god wanted them to go through that situations because god was working at their heart you know when god allows some of the things to happen at home at office 
or at workplace at all some other in some other areas of your life what god is trying to do god is actually working at our heart god is looking god is looking forward to a transformation in our heart so god allows things to happen in our life covid 19 what god is trying to do why god is allowing these things to happen in our world we only know after few you know probably few months after coming out of covid 19 we slowly will understand what was god trying to do and even probably we all started realizing what god is trying to do in our lives at this point of time it's very important to understand that god does something beautiful when he allows certain situations what is god up to you know we if you do not know what is god up to then it doesn't make any sense when we go through several situations of your life israel's mistake was they never knew what was god up to okay it's very important and i want to listen to this very carefully israel's couldn't go through the situations of their life the way that god expected it to be because they never knew what was god up to what was god doing in their heart they were unaware of it what was the real intentions and the desire of god's heart was absolutely unaware to them that's why they make made this uh, you know it is stony responses from their life let's look into what is god up to in our lives when god take us to the different thing god is here to bring a lasting change in us he is in a process he is in a process and a lasting change is the only only possible when things start from it within i will we all discuss this okay now the next part of god is in the process of separating a group of people who faith in jesus and focus to jesus will not waver in any situation whether in midst of all materialistic prosperity or pain a group of people who would treasure god hand his word above everything who would love the lord with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength regardless of good and bad situations god is in the process of creating a group of people who would who would treasure god and his word more than anything who would love the lord regardless of situation yesterday i said whether my my boat is full of fish or whether my boat is empty whether i have a pressure of the society and a pressure when i when i say when i face pressure and when i face pleasure when i face pressure and when i say when i face pleasure i would stand strong in the lord i will be in the lord i will not waver in any situations i'm not saying by the way i'm not saying i'm not i'm not kind of you know uh, speaking like a philosophical thing okay this is kind of possible just like that no i'm not saying like that at all please understand me we just human being we go through several situations some of the time it's quite tough but as i said in the first paragraph god is here to bring a lasting change in us and he is in a process don't don't doubt that god is in a process when god allowed david to run when god allowed joseph to be in this place where he was when god allowed this joseph to be taken from his family and taken him to egypt as a slave and then he went through whatever that he went through he was in the process of creating something new in joseph which was not in him amen god was in the process of creating something new in david something beautiful in david something long lasting in david when that what that was not in david when he was at home amen so god allows with us in so what is the goal of change okay what is the goal of change it is more than a better marriage well adjusted children a professional career or freedom from few sins god's goal is actually we become like him all about things god can through and uh, all all about things god can through christ jesus his goal is to free us from slavery of sin our bondage to self and our our functional idolatry so that we actually take on his character now we need to understand this truth if you are a christian if you are a believer a follower of jesus we must we must know this truth that many a times we place a lot of idols in our heart that means the center place of the heart sometime been you know it, it it's supposed to be christ christ supposed to be the lord you know 
savior Christ, Christ must be there as a Lord and our Savior, and as a friend, as a God, as an husband, you know, uh, 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 you know, into any relationship which is very strong. But many times what happens when ideals comes in our lives, slowly, knowingly or unknowingly, we replace Christ with many other things. All of the solutions I've mentioned here, what is this? These are all Christless solutions. You don't need Jesus Christ to find, that's why I said, anybody in this world does the same thing. You don't need Christ to actually, you don't need Jesus Christ to come up, to, you know, to get into the solutions, not at all. You don't need Christ at all. Everybody else does. What, what do you think when a, when a person who works in corporate world for many years, what, what he does? After he, he might take a small break. He might take a break and he just go somewhere to, to visit some places, take a month, month time of, I think some people take sabbatical years, some people take sabbatical months. After 20 years or 30 years working corporate, they might take a sabbatical week, sabbatical year, sabbatical of six months, half a year. Because they are bogged down and paralyzed and captured by many, many things. Right? The problem is your role, you will find there is a Christless solution. Jesus Christ is absolutely missing. Yesterday we have already told you, we have already discussed the fact that gospel is not something that needs to be preached once in a while. It must be preached to us every day. We're going, to, we're going to come to that point now. Now, what is the kind of Christianity that we need to live in this world to really help us that we will have a long-lasting long relationship with God? How can we really have this relationship with God? How is it possible that every day of our lives, uh, you know, how do I say, we can be more closer to Him, knowing His heart, knowing His will, and knowing His purpose? Now, I want you to understand one thing. Bible, as, as I told you yesterday, the Bible is a real book. It doesn't, it doesn't hide anything. You know, it speaks about the failure of Peter, one of the closest, uh, you know, disciple of Jesus. It speaks about the failure of Peter. Peter. It speaks about a failure of John. It speaks about a failure of failures of Paul. It speaks about a failure of all disciples. Sometimes it has placed Mag Mary Magdalene above all the disciples who followed Jesus for three and a half years. It doesn't hide anything. It speaks about God's God attesting a person called He is my, my, my God's own, my, my own heart person, David himself. But it, it very clearly speaks about the mistakes and the sins that he has done. It just plain as it is. It is a real book. First and foremost, you need to understand. Don't try to escape. Escaping from the Lord will not lead us anywhere. We don't need to. We don't need to. Listen to me carefully. We don't need to. God just knows who you are. He just understands you who you are. That's why whenever we, we read Psalm, Psalm is always for us. I'm saying, Lord, I just lost hope now. I'm just feeling really bad now. I don't see anything good coming out of this. You know, remember uh, Psalm number 73 where the Korah uh, children, there he actually writes a beautiful Psalm. It speaks about, he speaks about, uh, you know, uh, uh, when he see the see how the wicked people flourishes in the world, he kind of gets into a big town. He says that Lord, why am I actually washing my hands in righteousness? Why am I why am I trying to live a sinless life in this world? It's like stupid if you look around me. All these people, those who are wicked, they are just flourishing in their in, in their things. They are flourishing in their professions. They are doing really good in everything what they are doing. Why am I suffering here? Why should I be a faithful person in your life? Why can't I just do be like them? What is this? What is this? What is this happening? Right? What is this output or outcome of being a righteous person in this world? This is a real question he asked. Later, Samus says slowly, when he went into the presence of God and he closed his eyes, and Bible says in Psalm number 73, he saw, he saw of all great. Wonderful thing that could that will happen to a righteous man and what would be the end of a wicked man He understood oh God. There is a purpose of me being righteous in this world Yes, an unrighteous person a wicked person might flourish in this world But that's the end of his story is the story gonna end here on this earth Look at this his perspective about life started changing the moment that he went into the presence of God by the way, all other solutions that we have found, you know, putting everything upon somebody else and escaping from it, 
and you know keeping all the grudges in our heart without even dealing with those grudges you know without dealing the real issues of our heart what are we trying to do we are actually denying the grace of god in our life itself we are saying no to the healing process of god we are saying no to the process where god is taking us through let me tell you being a pastor for few years and being in mission organization worked for almost 5 plus years i have seen my young people and others who wasting the process you know we we we, we say this do not waste the pain do not waste the suffering do not waste when god allows you to go through some processes because that's where your relationship will become more closer you understand god better you will have a greater visibility about who god is what god is doing and what god is doing in your heart let me tell you even though israelites have seen this greatest and wonderful miracles of god in their lives can we ever imagine how they can be that rebellious and stiff neck people regardless of all the wonders god did in their lives because their eyes were blinded listen to me their eyes were blinded by the prosperity of the world they couldn't see things outside the prosperity of this world today many a times including pastors and leaders and everywhere including church believers our eyes can be blinded by the things of the world. we have to be very careful it's possible that we can easily overcome first we need to take away how do i say we need to come out of all these wrong solutions that we have already trying to apply into our hearts thinking that okay two hours of cricket match kind of will relieve the pain from me by the way no you are not dealing it right putting blame upon somebody else would really give you that freedom no it will not it will not and it cannot because you are missing the cross and the power of the cross now how is it possible for me to really experience god's presence and god's healing in my day to day life that's what we're going to discuss today we we have seen what is god is up to right we have seen what god is going to do it's it's more than just a better life it's more than just uh, having good good life here it's beyond that <clears throat> now uh, when we study bible says that we need to have a cross centered life okay. we need to have a cross centered life what do you mean cross centered life think about it think about a day that as i said you had a bad day you couldn't do well due to some reasons and actually you came back to uh, came back home really tired and stressed right and uh, uh uh you we 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 kind of don't know what to do at that particular time we don't we have no answers we don't know how to react to the situations you had tea okay you relax for some time sitting back probably uh, you, you read through the news or uh, did some other activities but before you sleep before you go to bed that you going to get into your room you close your door nobody there only you and your god Now you open your Bible and read few verses in the Bible or a passage in the Bible. Now you close your eyes and look at the cross. Bring the cross before you. And now what are you doing is you are really slowly starting to sort the real issues of your life. now you're bringing all the heat that came upon you in this morning to evening all the heat that you had to face in your life. or all the temptations that you had faced in this morning all the failures right all the failures that you had in this morning you are bringing everything being a real person now you are pouring it before the lord and you are really coming to face to face with god where you are repenting of sin you are bringing your heart now nothing is there you are not blaming at somebody else you are not escaping from the problem you are not having the grudge even though you have a grudge you are bringing it before the lord and say lord i really have a grudge against my coworker against my, my my member a team member i really i i really have some kind of pain against my my my, my boss because he said this it's really painful you are bringing it at the feet of jesus every day jesus said this those who wanted to follow me they must deny themselves and they must carry the cross daily loved it 
thank god that he didn't say weekly monthly or yearly because jesus says that see i am always available for you what has jesus told his disciples disciples i will not leave you as orphans i'm gonna be with you forever my dear brothers and sisters what are we afraid first we need to stop filtering our prayer i would always say this to my my friends and my my members we should stop filtering our prayers don't use wonderful beautiful uh, you know superb word to please god please as i said be like a psalmist be who you are share your heart how did you feel in this morning when you faced your situations you're trying to escape or or did you lie or you couldn't witness the lord when the, when you face situations where were you tempted by situations open before the lord and say lord i this is what i have felt and you ask david said lord i'm so sorry for the way that i what i committed with the betsima i know it is a sinful way of act i know you hated it but please don't take the holy spirit from me without you i can even think of living david being that person open hearted nothing to hide because we are coming before the cross you know we are so privileged than david are we not right we see the cross before us we know my forgiveness my redemption my happiness my joy my pleasure everything is on the cross i see my acceptance i know in the morning i failed i have spoken something against my friend but now what you're doing now you're not escaping from the problem you're not putting it to somebody else but you're coming back to god and say god i need you i don't want like this i know it's my heart's condition it is not because of it it is not because of what he said it is all about my heart condition i want that to be transformed lord i come before you i need your grace what did you see on the cross we see the ultimate expression of love grace mercy care acceptance on the cross that's why jesus said come to me those who are weary come to me those who are tired come to me those who are thirsty because i will give you the fresh living water and that living water will transform your life hallelujah amen the real transformation is possible my dear brothers and sisters it took some time for me to also to understand this part because i also was the same person like all of us going behind and creating so many things and try to escape from the problem personally i have i have committed a sin of blaming many things on my wife i told my wife sisley my wife never sisley sisley if you could do this in this way i will not get angry i will be more happy so what am i what am i up to i don't worry about how comfort she is i all about i want to be have a comfortable life sinful desire that's a clear sinful desire i want my life to be more comfortable good so that i want others to do everything right then slowly i understood nibu are you not are you not looking only for your good right yes slowly i understood i've been sinful to my wife i got angry at many a times at her because i want certain things to happen in a certain way i knew what i'm doing was a real sinful way of act i should have not responded that way and i have many 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 things you know before i getting married as i was a bachelor like uh, like anybody else uh, i was in a mission organization nlci bible trust organization for 5 years i was really privileged to be the person of the person of that that organization i used to leave home by early morning uh, uh, by by 7:45 8 o'clock i i used to reach there at 9 o'clock it's like an office i used to punch in i used to be there till 5:30 uh, and i do ministry and come back home i was a i was a assistant pastor in a church i was i was in all all the activities i thought i was a good person by the way i was not that bad i was doing good in ministry i was personally i was a okay person but when i got married slowly god started exposing my heart god started exposing my heart and i understood nibu you are not as good as you thought right that's where when you really face because when you face the heat of your life that's where the response real response would come out but by the way by the way we don't need to be we don't need to be self loathing don't do self loathing oh my god oh my god i don't think i can do no no there is an answer answer is cross right answer is not denying the situation answer is not escaping the situation answer is not self righteousness answer is cross cross is the only answer my dear brothers that's the only answer right so what i need to do i need to come to the cross 
a cross centered life when i look at the cross i know i might be rejected by my boss my work but i'm not rejected by my god because my identity is not as an engineer my identity is not i'm a pastor my identity is not just i'm a I, I, i'm an accountant or i'm a uh, i'm a lecturer i'm a doctor or nurse or whatever it is my identity is not that my identity is that i'm a child of god as i was in sin i was in slavery of sin my god has redeemed me redemption means my god has brought me by paying his own blood and he got me into his own family now i'm a i'm a part of a beautiful family father son and the holy spirit and myself and a great community with me i'm a part of a beautiful family i'm a justified and an adopted person my sins are forgiven look at this in the morning you had faced you had to face some rejections in your life because your boss did not like it or somebody did not like it or you have faced several kinds of rejections due to some other reasons in your life but when i come to the cross i know my christ has so rejected us then i don't care about other rejections because if jesus has accepted me as who i am then nothing else matters to me so bible says that we need to come back to the lord every day face the cross face him and open our heart hallelujah then bible speaks about a spirit filled life i mean when i face to face jesus said say let me tell you this there is no power uh, uh, in us other than the power of the holy spirit what transformed the life of disciples the spirit of god transformed the life of disciples they were just obedient to the voice of god as yes, i am being obedient to the voice of god like i'm coming back to god himself and saying lord i need you the moment i submit humbly come before the lord and i tell him the need of the transformation of my heart let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters god is listening to us he will accept you as you are the failure was where you happen because he loved to transform you and bible says there is a spirit of god the real potential is not you the real potential for the change is the spirit of god who is living in you the real potential for the change is the spirit of god who is living in you that was the change that was what making everyone dif different that is uh, that was what made di disciples different you know paul says one one paul says this that my outward person is being wasted away every day i'm becoming more weaker and weaker and weaker every day because of the persecution because of my age there are a lot of other factors you know that is making me more uh, you know you know vulnerable to all other situation outside my body but my inner man he says is being strengthened and renewed every day why because he is doing this what i'm saying now he is facing the cross every day he is actually getting back to the lord every day he is the one who wrote from a house person saying rejoice i say rejoice in the lord always do not be anxious about situation but bring it to the lord why he is he is a, he he's supposed to be the real anxious man because he know the situations of the many of the churches he has planted because it's all all how do we say the baby churches a new churches he know there were a lot of issues that happened in different he, he, he doesn't know how healthy the church is going to be he really confused he is doubtful about them but they are all paul says this rejoice in the lord do not be anxious because there is a god hallelujah bible speaks about holy spirit the dwelling of the holy spirit that will transform you okay when you had a bad day you came back home and you closed your door you faced to the lord and said lord i need your help i need your blessing i need your grace and your mercy you are not going out as the person you got in you will have a new power a new i would say a new strength to face the situation you will not face like how do your colleagues face rejections in their office you will not face rejections and you know you will not face uh, other uh, you know you know demeaning things in the office the way that everybody else did it no you don't need to because you are you possess the greatest power within yourself that is god himself living in you the spirit of god living in you in a corresponding few verses when he was actually he, he began you know as as a kid i want you to read as a kid chapter 36 verse 24 to 28 um um let's take bible as a kid in ok will you be will you, will you be possible can can you read that verse as a kid chapter 36 verse 24 to 28 
in 24 to 28 right yeah, exactly i will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness mm -hmm. and from all your idols I will cleanse you and I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh I will mm -hmm. I will put my spirit within you and cause mm -hmm. you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules you shall dwell in the land that i give to your fathers and you shall be my people and i will be your god i want you to read that verse again and again if possible when you get time did you read that part it's very clearly says new heart is impossible without uh, the spirit of god dwelling in your heart when god gave the prophet the vision about the new group of people god is going to bring them back and god creating a new heart in them let me tell you what god did is god placed his spirit in them because that spirit is going to lead their life so the newness of life is impossible without holy spirit the transformation that last is impossible without you you know without you allowing the cross of jesus to speak to you and allowing the spirit of god to help you to move forward in your life that's verse 20 something i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk look at this i will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my laws to be careful to obey my rules hallelujah it will not be like your forefather but you will obey me why because my spirit is indwelling in us john chapter 7 verse 7 jesus said those who are thirsty come to me and i will give you the living water and living water will flow out of you right what is going to bring that changes in your life dear brothers and sisters as i said a non filtered unfiltered prayer the real humble need of a transformation coming back to jesus every day being beginning the day with him and you know ending the day with him and always walking with him i know we are living in a life where things are not easy as always we think sometime yes we respond differently but we don't need to live in it always transformation is possible and is there in the cross don't try to take the escape routes with that will not take us anywhere you and i would be you know you know and out of the sri i said you, you you will be you will just stop one place that we can't move forward if you are not bringing and communing with the god we are continuing the communion with the god you know in the old testament whenever god speaks about himself and the relationship between god and the israelites he always used a picture of husband and wife you know why because god loves that kind of relationship where husband and wife bible says they are no more two but they are one the desire of god a desire of israelites would become one you know that kind of that is a kind of relationship god god wanted to uh, you know uh, uh, establish with all of us that's a covenant which christ christ said christ said you you're no more slaves you're no more friends but you 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 are more than anything else you are like my children why because that's a kind of so what is what is what do we do when we face heat in our lives when we face temptations in our life get back to him don't rely on your solutions don't deny no self righteous no escaping get back to him he will heal us he will strengthen us so that you and i would overcome the situations that what we face amen i want to read i want to bring your attention to uh, one more verse in the bible that is jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 to 10 it's very important i want everyone to turn their bibles if you have one otherwise you can read it later can note it down this was jeremiah chapter 17 was 5 to 10 right this is a bible says thus says the lord cursed is the man who trusts in in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart turns away from the lord he is like the shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come right he shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land verse seven blessed is the man who trusts in the lord whose trust is the lord he is like the tree planted by the water 
that sends out its root by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit wow did you see the distinction that the prophet is making there a clear distinction prophet is making there the one who trusts us in the lord when he comes he will be in a parched land where he won't be able to produce a godly fruit a spiritual fruit the spirit of it is the fruit of the spirit why because he is trusting in himself he has taken those escape routes but one who trusts in the lord always one who coming back you know bringing his root back to the stream where the real water is flowing where the living water is flowing doesn't matter what is the situation outside doesn't matter how heat the situation is how difficult the situation is this guy will bear the fruit for sure why it's not because of the fruit it's not because of the tree why because he has planted he has taken his root to that stream hallelujah that's a transformation god will bring it into your life let me tell you it's not about you it's all about god bible is not about david bible is not about joseph bible is not about peter bible is not about paul it's all about god and what god does through his people it is all about his faithfulness his love his grace his power it all about god amen it's in the beginning god created it's everything starts with him and ends with him we going to come back and we say amen hallelujah i hope this is going to help you in your life let me tell you bring it to the lord be like the psalmist opening your heart nothing to hide god you know what i've gone through god you know the way that my heart is thinking right now i am somebody who love the pleasure my heart is desire my heart desires are there you know i have few more examples still because of the time we are, i'm i'm getting we know in the bible there is an there is a uh, you know a, a, a character called josiah in the old testament right who got he, who brought a reformation in the land of jerusalem when josiah came to uh, became a king uh, he found out this uh, a word of god right he sent his people and he found the word of god from the temple because the temple was completely destroyed it destroyed destroyed in the sense uh, nobody was using it everything was closed no worship of god was happening everything was absolutely utterly uh, completely demolished uh, in its worship and at last josiah see the god's word and he brings the god's word when he read it he started crying the real repentance came into his life then what he did is he started uh you know demolishing one idol after one another 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 in the land he purified the land because he brought the god's word into the center right there are so many times even including pastor sometimes ministry would become my center i would become my center my sermons would become my center my theological knowledge would could take the center no 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 when i read the word when i bring the word it just clearly shows me who am i and how much i need god that humbles me that brings me back again to the lord and say nibu you need to remove that idol and i go to the lord and say lord please i need the strength to remove that idol from my heart and you want i want you to reign in my life hallelujah so let's god continue to reign in our hearts let's not be i let us not trust ourselves but trust in the lord when you read psalm number 4 when we are not getting much time i'll just go through this when you read psalm number 4 we speak about how david is facing one of the toughest situation in his life where he was running away three and four when he ran away from absalom his own son uh, he wrote this psalm and this is what he says in few verses you know he actually speaks about his heart he uh, he, he doesn't run away from god but he come near to god in the situations you know as i said when you face the real heat of your situation don't run away from god but come close to him come close to him solutions are not in the escaping route solutions are in christ it can only found in himself you know in in, G, in god himself and then verse 3 it says that he reminds he reminds himself of the identity as a god's child i want you to read this when you get time please uh, you know i can just write down note down this this point uh, you can just take time to read that you know uh, verse 3 speaks about how he reminds himself of his identity as a god's child and verse 5 you see he examines his own heart verse 5 again speaks about he worships the lord and verse 6 he minister I means there are a lot of other people some other people also followed him when he was actually ran away from absalom he ministers them the last verse verse 6 again says 
he rest us in the Lord. Amen. I know that appraisal did not happen. I know that blessing supposed to come to me did not come to me. I know there are situations which is just against my life. But when he did not and ran, ran away from the Lord, but he went to the Lord. He identified himself as child God. He started worshipping the Lord. When he worshipped, his heart was calm and quiet and he rested completely in the Lord. I want to end by saying Dr. Charles Stanley, one of his messages said, the three things that God does when God allows you to go through situations in your life, when you face heat, heat, in, heat in your life, he said the cleansing, the companionship, and he called us three C's. When he says the cleansing, the confession, that means the real change of our heart. Companionship. It will bring, bring me back more close to my family. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God's family. It brings more close to him. The third word is, third is the conformity. I'm being transformed to the truly follow and obey and trust him as God's who will never leave us. That is in time of crisis. Transformation to a truly follower, a truly the one who obeys the Lord in all situations of our lives. Right. I wanted to end uh, by saying this. God will do a great transformation in life and God is very much faithful. My dear brothers and sisters, he's a faithful God. He has, he has called you for a purpose. Let us not waste the process when God is taking us through. God is a good God. Do not waste the process. Do not waste the suffering. But be faithful and stand strong so that, you know, when we go through what we go through, when we face situations, what we face, right? The COVID-19 and brought a, a kind of an unprecedented and un, uncertain situation to all of us. I don't know how things are going. We do not know. But one thing I know, God is in control. He's a sovereign God. Come back to him. Right? Let the relationship, companionship with Christ be more strong now. Let him transform me so that I and you would become like him. Let our heart have the same desire of the God's heart. What is God is up to? Let my heart also, also up to the same thing what God is up to. Let us align our desire with the God's desire. It is not possible when we go, go away from the Lord. It's only possible when we come more close to the Lord. This evening, can we just close our eyes together? Can I pray for you this evening? We have just taken two, two days, almost one hour sessions. We have learned the word together. Right, many of the escaping route that we have taken. We thought that could actually bring some kind of reliefs and some kind of uh, uh, solutions to the issues. Let me tell you, no, the real solution, the real, uh, you know, out of us, the real breakthrough in your life is only found in Christ. That's when the New Testament, Paul is the one who uses this word in Christ many a times. En Christos, we call, we call it in Greek. It's a powerful term. He says our salvation is in Christ. He says our forgiveness in Christ. Redemption is in Christ. New life is in Christ. Everything is in Christ. The victorious Christian life is in Christ. It is not without him. Let us not deny. Let us not be self-righteous. Let us not take escape routes. But come back to him. When you come back to him, you know what as Paul says? Paul speaks in a prayer for Ephesians, praying the Lord, you open the hearts of these Ephesians so that they will see the enormous power. That's what we read yesterday. I wanted to read that verse again, but we don't have time. Let's read, let, let, let's think about it in 2 Peter chapter 3. He spoke about the, the enormous power that's going to bring the transformation in you, in us. We need to add one character, new character, a godly character, a new godly character. Then we will not be unproductive, but we will be productive for his kingdom. You don't need to face this issue, situations the same way Israel is dead. You and I can face a situation like Paul dead. You and I can face a situation like David dead. Why? Because Christ and his spirit dwells in us. Father, we commit each and every one those who heard the sermon on this evening, your master. 
we wanted to pray together that we would lead a victorious Christian life. And that is not found in anything else, Lord. It is found in only in you, Lord. Your word gives us the direction because that is a lamb unto our feet. The spirit of God who is dwelling in us will give us an enormous power so that we could overcome every situation and every heat that we face in our life, Lord. Whether it is pain or the pleasure, whether it's the pressure or the pleasure or the material is blessing any situation that we have, we have, Lord. We will be able to face it by your power, O Lord. Thank you, Father, for reminding us this evening that you are a loving God. You are a wonderful God. You are a compassionate God. When we look at the cross, we see this ultimate expression of love and, you know, love and glory and faithfulness and care and redemption. Everything is found in you, Jesus. Absolutely nothing impossible without you, Lord. You have called us to your family, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the perfect harmony, the perfect peace, the perfect obedience. Lord, thank you that you're going to enable each one of us so that we will be obedient to your word, regardless of all the situations that we face in our life, Lord. Thank you for blessing us together. Thank you for speaking to us in this morning, in this evening. Bless us, Lord. Specifically, wanted to come at IPC Harvest Church there and on all the believers and pastors and family, Lord Father. Wanted to pray and ask your blessings over their life, O Master. Use them as a lighthouse in the land, the Lord, so that many people would be attracted to the gospel of Jesus, Lord Father. Hallelujah. Help us so that we will preach the gospel every day to your to our heart and to the life of people, O Master. May the gospel of Jesus transform our heart, Lord Father. May the church be a great blessing to many people. Use the pastor and family for your glory, O Lord. Use them powerfully for your function. Because nothing is impossible by you, Lord. You are the Lord one who agreed wonders in the past. He's so faithful to do the same wonders today, Lord. We pray for the COVID-19 situations right now. We know that you are listening to us. We know that you are transforming things. We know that you are doing something wonderful here in this land. You are allowing something to happen so that something would change here in this land, of oh Father. May the name of Jesus be glorified in everything, Lord. May the Father's name, the Son's name, the Holy Spirit name be glorified here on this land. May our life will be more tuned to your desires and to your plans and to your purpose, Lord. It's not about us. It's all about you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for listening to our prayers. In the name of Jesus, we all pray together. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Thank you. In all call it you. <clears throat> Amen. Thank God for this beautiful evening that the Lord has given us. Um, truly. We were being ministered by God, and I, I believe every one of you are blessed. Let us thank. Uh, let us thank.